Welcome to the Virtual Space TV Show. Here are our stories for this time. Startups fly high up. Quakes and other odd stuff on Mars. Sweeping up the space miss. Missouri High School simulate space. And at the end, it is my turn with the space weather. Over to you, Amanda. NASA has contracted with several small companies to carry research payloads to high altitudes on reusable suborbital rockets. One of those companies is Masson Space Systems of Mojave, California. Masson is developing rocket vehicles that take off vertically, go all the way to space, and then come straight back down onto the pad for a powered landing. The latest rocket is named Cerro, and they are testing it step by step from tethered flights to free flights of higher and higher altitudes. Recently Masson flew Cerro to 61 meters above the pad, and then returned for a powered landing. In the coming months, they plan to fly Cerro at supersonic speeds, and reach 30 kilometers in altitude. Armadillo Aerospace in Texas is another small startup firm with a NASA contract that is also developing vertical takeoff and landing vehicles. However, to test out their technology, they have recently been flying more conventional looking tube rockets. These rockets will still be reusable, but rather than returning to the ground with powered landings, they will float back to the ground with steerable parachutes. Armadillo calls this series of rockets STIG, and they are powered by the company's highly reusable liquid-fueled engines. Most conventional-sounding rockets use solid-fuel motors. On January 28, Armadillo flew STIG to an altitude of 95 km above Spaceport America in New Mexico. The camera on board took great pictures of the surrounding area including the Rio Grande River. Near Apogee, the rocket released an inflatable balut, which is intended to stabilize and slow the rocket as it falls through the extremely thin atmosphere at such high altitudes. Unfortunately, a flaw in the tethering caused the cord to snap off, and the rocket fell straight back down and reached such a speed that the main parachute was also ripped off. The rocket hit the ground at supersonic speeds. The balut and nose cone, however, parachuted separately and were recovered intact. Despite the loss of the vehicle, it successfully tested the components of interest, and Armadillo will now proceed to Stig B, which has a larger diameter to carry more fuel, and will reach 125 kilometers with a sizable scientific payload. The first launch is expected in the next few months. 
scientists studying images transmitted from high-resolution cameras on NASA's Mars Reconnaissance Orbiter say they have found clear evidence of a recent earthquake, or Mars quake, on the Red Planet. The power of the seismic motion could be as high as magnitude 7. The images show ruptures in the crust of the Mars surface, and also the tracks of boulders that were dislodged and rolled down hills. Such tracks are found for about 100 kilometers around a point near the Elysia Mons volcano. The winds on Mars have not yet obscured the tracks, so they must be fairly recent. This would overturn the long-held belief that Mars is geologically quiet. However, seismic monitors need to be placed on Mars to confirm that it still rumbles. Mars is a marvelous place where often unusual structures and dynamic events are seen. Visiting spacecraft have captured images of, for example, landslides, dust devils, and shifting sand dunes. Mars visitors will have a vast diversity of landscapes and phenomena to explore. The growing cloud of debris in orbit around the Earth is becoming a serious threat to future utilization of our space neighborhood. The largest objects, which consist primarily of derelict rocket boosters and lifeless satellites, should be removed relatively soon, before they start to collide and initiate a chain reaction, as collision debris lead to even more impacts. However, governments won't get serious about addressing the policy, and legal issues involved in cleaning up the mess until there are credible technical methods put forward that could deorbit a significant number of objects in a reasonable time frame and at an affordable cost. Two such methods have gotten some attention in the recent weeks. The Swiss Space Center has a plan to build a small cheap satellite that would rendezvous with a target object, grab onto to it, and gradually move it to a lower orbit where it would eventually burn up in the atmosphere. The Clean Space One program could have its first test in 2015 with the Swiss spacecraft as the target to demonstrate the system. A Clean Space One should be small enough that it could get a low-cost ride to orbit as a secondary payload. The other proposal is the Electrodynamic Debris Eliminator, EDDE, vehicle from the company Star Technology and Tether Applications in the USA. The EDDE uses an electrodynamic tether, powered by solar panels, to move within the Earth's magnetosphere without the need for propellant. Though it would move relatively slowly, it could eventually reach most any low Earth orbit. An EDDE would move up to a debris object and attach to it with a grappler. It could bring the object down for deorbiting, or even collect debris at a station in LEO, so that the material could be used for in-space operations. Since the EDDE does not need propellant, it can operate indefinitely. The EDDE systems are also relatively cheap to build. It is calculated that a dozen of them could remove all debris greater than 2 kilograms within 7 years. The Navy will test a prototype PDDE in the fall of 2013. Perhaps these potential technical solutions will prompt spacefaring governments finally to start addressing the orbital debris problem seriously. Hickman High School in Columbia, Missouri, has been going to space since 1991. Teacher Pat Dougherty organizes annual simulations of missions to orbit and on the International Space Station. Teams of students prepare throughout the year to serve as astronauts, scientists and mission control engineers during a six-day mission event held each spring. The participants study aeronautics and astronautics and have hands-on experience with their math and science knowledge. They build replicas of station modules and equipment. Their missions even include EVAs using underwater scuba dives in a swimming pool. These types of education-based space simulations are a great way 
to excite students about science and engineering. There is nothing like hands-on involvement to take advantage of the energy and intensity of young minds. Now we turn to James C. Burke, our space weatherman. James, is it just me, or are the aurora especially beautiful this year? Yes, Amanda. The sun has been very active lately, and producing huge waves of solar-charged particles that sweep over the Earth's magnetosphere. The particles spiral down the magnetic field lines to the polar regions, where they interact with the atmosphere to produce these fabulous light shows. Here is a beautiful time-lapse picture of a research rocket launched in February near Fairbanks, Alaska to study the aurora. I bet it would be marvelous to ride on such a rocket up into the aurora. Yes, and in fact there is a spaceport in development in northern Sweden where they plan to do just that. They are working with Virgin Galactic to fly space tourists in a few years on Spaceship 2 vehicles, from which they will get fantastic views of the northern lights. Aren't the crews on the International Space Station also seeing the aurora? Yes, the ISS orbit dips far enough north and south to allow the crews to catch views of aurora over both polar regions. A new highly sensitive camera on the station has been producing amazing nighttime videos of the Earth, many of which show aurora. Perhaps not too far into the future, lots of space tourists will be able to visit space stations to watch such incredible scenes in person. Yes, and I hope space reporters will be among them. I can hardly wait. Thanks, Jim. Our next show is planned to air in the second half of March. You can follow the latest space news on www.hobbyspace.com or email me your suggestions at amanda.bush at binary-space.com But no spam, please. Stay tuned.